Welcome to Land Academy. I'm Jack Butella. I'm Joel DeWitt. We show you how to buy real estate for half of what it's worth. And sell it on the internet really fast. We, we are, are Jack, Jack and Jill, Jill and this, and this is, is the Jack, Jack and Jill, Jill Show, show too. too. With over 15,000 completed transactions, we're the experts at acquiring property. Of all kinds, not just land. For half price and flipping them for way more. All right, let's get this show started. Jack Butella with Jill DeWitt. Hello. Welcome to our show once again today. In this episode, Jill and I talk about overcoming your fear of data. What a great <laughs> show, Jill. I know you came up with this. Before we get into that, uh, before we get into it, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the landinvestors.com online community. It's I think I think we should create some support groups for this <laughs> <laughs> topic, so we'll get into that. <laughs> All right. Uh, John asks, is there a list of counties that are not in RealQuest database? What a great, simple question. Awesome yes. question. If you go to... Um, Yes, there are a list of rogue counties, and it happens to be the exact same list that don't participate uh, in all of the core logic pro- uh, program, all of the core logic products, which we are licensed mm-hmm. providers for. So the simplest way to do it is to go to uh, parcelfact.com forward slash coverage. And there's a map there, and you can see which ones don't. It's, you know what? It's less than, you know, there's 99% coverage, so it's less than 1%. You know what is interesting? I was just thinking about with yesterday's show, we talked about states that don't participate, but I'm looking at the map right now, and it's every state is some in some way represented, but there's a few counties within states that are not. Primarily, I don't know if that's is that the Dakotas. I don't know, but there's a few. I can't. But you can look at the map. But it looks like every state has some representation, including Alaska and Hawaii. Are you looking what I'm looking at? Yeah, I created it. Okay, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it just ties into the question and from yesterday, silly. Thank you. All right, but cool. It's real simple. You know, here's here's the 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 meat of that is every month or so, counties report to CoreLogic data. They report in all different ways. They send a fax. They call it in. Um, maybe some of them, the more r- urban ones, have an API where they connect to their database. But ev- all of them have a system of reporting changed d- data to CoreLogic. And CoreLogic pays them really well to do this. It's the only reason they do it, actually. And then CoreLogic, God bless them, puts it in a, in a format. All the counties have different data formats, every single one. They put it in a format that we can all understand and then provide it to us at a very, very low cost. It's kind of like paying... Three dollars a month to use Microsoft Excel, a multi-billion-dollar product that they let us use for three bucks that we could never come up with on our own. So that's how CoreLogic gets its data. But like, just like every grade school class, there's a couple of kids in there that are trying to wreck it for everybody. And these are those rogue counties that we're talking about here. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. These are the kids in the back of the class that don't want to play. Yep. Or like in every office, you know. Right. You know, exactly. we got rid of our, we had to get rid of a couple of people in our organization that were those people recently. Got it. <laughs> That's it. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> if you have a question, Jill's too nice to tell the truth about stuff like this. If you have a question or you want to be on the show, reach out to either one of us on landinvestors.com. Today's topic, how to overcome your fear of data. This is something I don't know about because I've never really feared data. Uh-huh. Maybe Jill can uh, get some light on this. This is me of the show. You've heard of it. <laughs> you have. know of it. There, I mean, we all know people that you say the word data and then their eyes gloss over, you know, and they're like, uh-oh, and they think it's something awesome and you have to be an engineer or, you know, brainy to understand and you really don't but I mean it's something you can learn so I really want to talk about this because I know I have a lot of people that um, come to us and they're not maybe a, a pro at Excel and maybe they don't really understand the data or how to manipulate the data and sometimes they're a little afraid of it like and they they feel like it's um something they can't get past but I wanted to to just let everybody know you really can you know 
I, I really like we did a call one time with a member a few months ago and he said, you know, in his experience, um, ambition or I don't know if it was commitment, but it was really like drive. It was like drive trumps a lot of things. So, and I firmly believe that. Me too. So you might think that you are the most inept, you know, I, you know, whatever you want to, you know, how people, so you, you might think that you can't, there's no way it's, it's just too much for me. I can't do it. You know what? If you really put your heart and soul into it, you can and you will. And it might take you three hours and it takes somebody else one. So what? You know, once you got it, you got it. So, and and we have a lot of people, like I said, I know they came to us like, I didn't even know what a mail merge is. And they're doing them all the time. And, yeah, you know, exactly, you, Joe. You, you can learn this and you can do it. I mean, think about, think about, God, I don't know, everybody, look at your career where you are right now. When you entered that position, did you think you'd be doing what you do today? Heck, or even myself, I'm, I'm a great example. When I dove into this, Jack, with you, I didn't know I'd be learning how to do all this stuff. I had no idea I could, you know, work with maps and deal with all these properties and things. Yeah. And, you know, look at now, it's like, yeah, no brainer. And I teach other people how to do it. Well, we can get into more, we will get into it. There's a few tricks I have to help you get over your fear of data here in a minute, but I'm going to tell a real short story. When I was in high school, my best friend was a valedictorian of the school and he be of our class and he went on to become a multi-billionaire uh, he's got like a little micro slash mini uh berkshire hathaway in michigan and you know so i'm walking around in this guy's academic shadow for four years just thinking oh my god oh, this kid he doesn't have to study he doesn't he's brilliant and he turns out he was brilliant and is brilliant and i had to uh, try to keep up and it was a good exercise for me because it took me exactly what you just said five hours what it to learn what it took him 10 minutes but it motivated me mm -hmm. so you know and we're putting food on the table just fine um so you just have to do whatever it takes to overcome this fear of data if you have it mm -hmm. i don't think you've ever had you, you know you understand technical stuff pretty well joe right you know what i have a weird gene or something um that i'm not afraid of anything you know i watch people that are like new in a job and they're really nervous about making mistakes or they don't want to volunteer to do something i'm like oh no bring it you know i don't know why, where it comes from but i don't i don't i'm sometimes a little too secure <laughs> i think i'm like all right i'll try it and i might fail miserably but i'm like oh, you know <laughs> sure bring it i'll do it so um i i was never afraid but i wonder how much of it is though too I had a really good teacher and that's you, you know, that you, I was never this into data and, and, uh, you know, until this bit, well, no, maybe I was in other businesses, but you know, I didn't really know what I was doing, I guess. I don't right. know. But my biggest so, thing is, yeah, give us your examples. What are your ways? So here's of, the thing. Okay. I'll break it all down. It's real simple. They, and it is. It actually is simple, and how you manipulate it gets complicated. But there's a few few things that I think, can, if you when you get stuck, if and when you ever really do get stuck, just go back to these basic concepts. You're dealing with a single piece of property in a very large database, like 148 million pieces of property in this country. It's not an infinite number. When you get stuck on data, go back to just dealing with one property. And how you want, you know, if you're, if you're looking in a day, let's, here's an example. If you're trying to find all the five acre properties in Arizona, northern Arizona, let's say in Mojave County, I always pick on Mojave County for some reason. All the five acre properties in Mojave County that are zoned SFR, single family residential, then think about that one property that's zoned single family residential and what it looks like from a data perspective. Not what it looks like visually, forget about that, but what it looks like from a data perspective and then replicate it and see how many are in there. And then get in there and see the differences once you have that data set. All the five acre properties that are zoned FS SFR. Then from there, now you have the basic, you've scrubbed down the data from the universe of those 148 million properties and now let's say it's only 2,800 properties or some number from there you're just scrubbing it for further 
Some properties have houses on them. Some properties have improvements. Some properties have a pool. Some properties are burned down. And get down to that data set that you really want. So when people say that they're, they don't understand data or it's too much, what, what they don't, they never went through the exercise of scrubbing. It's called scrubbing down that I just described. And I, and I really think the first time you do that, then you can really see how valuable using data is to send offers out to owners. What you're going to find after the first, second, third, maybe fourth mailer is that, well, every single time I send a letter to somebody that's got a 3.2 acre property in South Carolina County X that has zoning of this and with what X, Y, Z, they send it back to me and they want me to buy it. Well, why don't I just do that everywhere? And that's how people quit their jobs and make this a career. They find that tiny little specialization that... They're looking at the data, they're analyzing it, and they find that little specialization that makes sense to them. Mm-hmm. But it all starts with the data. All right. All right. Oh, I didn't know if you're still there. No, yeah, totally. <laughs> you know, no, I'm just thinking, you know, for me, the big thing about, about um, using, using data, there's lots of ways that you could do this business. You could do this business, you know, like one-offs. It's a whole lot harder. You'll never really get big that way, but you could. So for me, the key about using data is it does two things for me. Number one, it keeps me from getting emotional about an asset because I'm not looking at the asset. I'm looking at a spreadsheet. And for me, that's huge. Um, it's really easy to get caught up in, oh, isn't that pretty? We should do this with it. No, 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 no. And then number two is volume. So if you're, if you're, let's just back up, say you're a flipper and you don't use data, you go out with business cards or you go out with, you put signs in the ground, we buy houses, whatever it is kind of thing. You're going to do one offs here and there, right? You may be scanning the MLS every day, trying to find one here, find one there, find one here, find one there. So you're just doing it like, like that way. And for me, I'm going to get emotional about it because I'm seeing it. That's bad. And two, I, I'm, I'm only dealing with a few properties a week, maybe, and I'm working my rear off versus if I come at it from a different angle, this is just doing everything a different way. I'm using data and a big area and I'm sending out mass volume of letters and things like that, letting them come back to me. Boy, it's a whole different ball game, you know, and what you and I, how we, how we come at this business, I think is so, that's, I think part of it, what's so, um, mind boggling to people is I never thought about coming about the business this well, way. Well, it's, it's mind boggling to people who are brand new. Okay. And that's not really our customer. Or okay. It's been for quite some time. You know, though, I mean, I, I hear you, but I tell you, I still, I still hear people that have been in the, is the industry that in, in real estate and they still, you know, are talking about going out looking for deals though. Mm-hmm. You know, they're still, you know what they're doing? I still see investors standing in the back of uh, real estate uh, meetings um, trying to find people that have properties. So I don't know. I just look at that like, isn't that just like a one-off and kind of a, that's just a whole lot of work. That's a, that's our customer really lately. It has been for the last six months. Somebody who's who understands real estate in general. Mm-hmm who's uh is cash flowing who's made it their career they they have they've shied away from this part of it that they are doing meetups or they're doing they're in groups right. or or they found they're they're scouring the mls or they're relying on brokers or they figured the real estate piece fit out which frankly is the easiest part mm-hmm. well let me they ask just, you this they've casted this concept of data aside because uh they're getting, you know, for some reasons, you know, they, they have some fear of it. And that it's not that hard. You know, what? that's why we're releasing offers to owners shortly to be, to alleviate that. So they don't, if you don't want to learn it, we're not going to ram it down your throat. Mm-hmm. We'll just do it for you. Okay. So that's my question. So I'm in the industry. I'm not using data. That, I'm not using data. I'm not using it the right way. Am I afraid of it? Do I not understand it? Um, am I don't even know what I'm missing? What do you think is the common thing? It's that. You don't know what you're missing. Uh, it's okay. That. That's okay. it. Because this, 
the the real estate upper end real estate echelon of people are not afraid to say, "Oh my gosh, I did that wrong," or they don't they don't have egos. You know, there's a couple of people that are commercial real estate icons. One of them's a president who people who is is just. Uh, very standoffish in general and, and a lot of people in the real real estate world are not like that he doesn't represent everybody you know right so you know if you sat down with him for a half hour and said hey why don't you just send a letter to every single person who owns an office building for uh, 187 dollars a square foot and you know i've said that to people who are like really 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 successful at this and they fall mm-hmm. over so they're like, well, why didn't I talk? Why didn't 10, 25 years ago somebody talk to me about this? Or why didn't I come up with it? I why said, is that? You're not is alone, that... buddy. You're not alone. Yeah. That's what we're here for. What do Turns you out... find in your experience? Do you find more people that are like that? I mean, do they do they even believe you? So there's a few reactions that happen. What it, and it depends on like it depends on a personality type. The first reaction you get is the most often I get the, the one that I just described where, it, or, you know, Jill, for a like cocktail party or something, and I say, yeah, yeah, we send everybody an offer just to see who's going to sign them back. They're like, hey, that's maybe the greatest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, hilarious. Some of them say, well, why would you ever? There's a, this is a very small percentage. These are the ones that crack me up. Well, why would you take advantage of somebody like that? Yeah. Why would you ever pay anybody for an asset? It's less than it's worth. And my answer is, well, so you never been to a garage sale then, right? Yeah. <laughs> And they usually say, well, you're darn right. I've never been to a garage sale. That's like, below, that's below like, me. <laughs> did you walk up and pay the sticker price for your car? <laughs> that's exactly the same thing. Like, so, well, that's... <laughs> so, and that's a real small percentage, but it's fun to laugh at those kind of people. Mm-hmm. But the vast majority are like, you can start, you just look, you see them look over your shoulder and they start thinking, what if I send all my neighbors out, you know? I just, this is a true story. I just met with Letterstream, the guy that owns Letterstream. Mm-hmm. And he said, because of you and what you, and the, and the number of letters that your people are running through our company, which is approaching 100,000 a month, <laughs> me and my wife and my son, my son's 15 years old, decided to go get a data set from the county of all of, because we, and we bought a house. Oh, that's um, awesome. Because he's one of those guys that when we sat down a long time ago, more than a year ago to, to do like a, you know, cooperating agreement. He's like, eh, what are you talking about? This isn't going to work. He just bought his house. They moved in already. That's hilarious. He said we saved about 80,000 bucks. Isn't that funny? And he is son, not alone. His, his 15-year-old son who now works, you know, part-time in their uh, print shop. He's like, yep. I say print shop. It's not. It's not a right. kinkos. It's like an industrial. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh. He's, he's hooked. He's like, well, I want to send a letter to every single person on the planet. Right. We know that reminds me of that reminds me of that member that we have that the the bank representative. He always seems to go to, you know, he gets the same person in the bank when he goes in and the bank guy's telling him he's about to quit his job and do what this guy does because he's watching this guy's bank balance grow. And he asks some questions. And yeah. I'm like, that's hilarious. That's happened to me too. That's same. <laughs> yep. So funny. Yep. <laughs> it's good stuff. So, yeah. So, so. We're way I mean, over in time. Okay. But it's really not a fear. It's, it's, it's not I a mean, fear. It it's is a lack fear. Of understanding. There you go. Don't be fearful. You got yeah. this. And we're here to help. Join us in another episode where Jack and Jill discuss how to use information. That's me. And inspiration. That's me. To get just about anything you want. We use it every day to buy property for half of what it's worth and sell it immediately. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. Good show, Joel. I mean, it's maybe not our most entertaining show that's ever happened, but it needed. It, these people need to know mm-hmm. that it this works, is- and it's it's not complicated. It's really not. Mm-hmm. Well, this partially came up because I have a um, person that's scheduled a call with me later this week. That that's their fear. They're like, I have the time, I have the money, I have my wife on board, I have all these things. Gosh, I'm just not a pro at Excel. Is this going to hurt me? You know, and that's their number one thing. And it's no, it's not going to hurt you. Can you learn all this stuff? Heck yeah. So it's, I mean, you know, the, the obvious thing is, you and I know between our two talent sets, we have devised this. That mm-hmm. there's a lot of people like that, way more than people like us. So mm-hmm. we do. We solve the problem. Totally. That, and that's what offers to owners.com will be next month. Mm-hmm. You don't want to do the thing, you just fill your order out and we'll send it out for you. There you go. It's simple as it's as simple as that. 
information and inspiration to buy undervalued property. We are Jack and Jill, and this was the Cash Flow from Land Show. We are the experts at acquiring property of all kinds, not just land. For half price, just so we can flip it for way more. And really fast. Thanks for listening. You are not alone in your real estate ambition.